show the progress on the course information system web service. Uh, and I'm going to call it that now because that's basically what I've been able to turn it into. So uh, what we've got here with course information service is it's basically, um, let me go back to the courses list here, uh, we're loading this up with all of our course information. Um, but this way we can present stuff to students or faculty, whoever we want, as to what courses we actually offer. Then, under the hood of all this, comes the fun part. So, we start to get into things like field collections and storage of what information relates to what. So, this is basically all the data that's necessary to drive the train of the running of a semester. Um, you know, so we're, we're given an LTI request, um, and then we pass students through how, how you get that whole thing set up. So doing now is I've uh, been working on this uh, quick setup page and this is basically going to go allow to create a course or use an existing one but we're going to create a new one for this example uh, the course we're going to create is advanced 100, we'll call it advanced 100 and so method of access we have four options as to how you can limit access um, or not limit um, so we have something called activation code which is actually a, a module based on entity that i released recently um, you can, we can require our internal authentication and you know, limit access to students. So we're just going to do uh, limit students, or you know, we'll do web access. Um, service. So this system is uh, kind of a lightweight version of Agar. So it's actually able to go and provision um, against other addresses this, this type of service. So we're going to say for Dance 100, we want to use the course instructional flow service. Um, which will, this is R10, so you can see it's a different address, and this was created manually. We're starting to get into the automated part of this. Um, offering, when is this going to be offered? So we're going to say this is fall 2013-2014. Access string is a primary key associated to the section of the course. Typically, in a learning management system, you'll see this as something like uh, fall 2012-2012 would be 13-14. Uh, in our case, it's you know some additional identifiers that make it unique. Um, instructor of record, ability to upload a syllabus and associate it. So we're just going to use my sample syllabus two here, so we can upload the syllabus right here. So when I click create course, this is actually going to kick off a job. And you'll see it will ask to create dance 100 momentarily. You'll be emailed when the job is complete. Space is created. So I'm still working on error messages and things, obviously. Um, so what that did is, if we look at just the content in the system here, it went and created the course Dance 100. Then you'll see it set the method to access, you know, login required. It created a field collection of an offering, and then inside that field collection, another field collection called a section. And so you'll see my section here in which I'm the instructor of record. Um, it uploaded my syllabus and associated it here. Here's my unique identifier for the key. Um, this other information, you know, it's still obviously working on the automation part and filling this out. The other thing it does is it creates an instance of a service. So you can see what an instance of a service looks like. It's, in this case, you know, the service is Course Instructional Flow and the course is Dance 100. Uh, in this way, you know, we could have other courses and point to different services with them. Um, so we're going to have multiple services that we're starting to roll out for people. Um, one service could be a rubric service. And the reason you would have this in a separate location from your primary uh, course site is so that it can scale independent of the rest of the systems you're working on. Um, theoretically, we could have this site be Drupal 7 and start deploying Drupal 8 courses using this methodology. So I hit pause there for a second so that you didn't see my email. But So you see I have a Dance 100 has been added message that comes across and gives me a link. So this is what you get. We're basically um, creating a site. And you'll notice these are different addresses. Uh, creating sites in a structured way uh, on a remote service. So this then has the capability of talking back to the, the previous web services or the, uh, the course information services we've shown in previous, um, previous videos. So to see what that looks like, we go in here and I'm just going to modify a value to something that I know will work. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so do one, two, three, four, five. Change the second 
saved, and I believe one, two, three, four, five will work. I might have to put in that other value. Um, but you'll see this actually, and we'll go into modules. This didn't just create Drupal. This actually created an instance of the uh, MOOC distribution. Uh, so you see there's 127 modules enabled. It then went and did some additional uh, install routines, like turning on our internal authentication system, um, hooking us up with just the arts and architecture settings to drive this train. Uh, so little nuances like that that it's able to do. And let's go to syllabus here. So we have a stable connection back to the course information system uh, because this page loaded effectively. This is not a node in Drupal. And if I go to content, you will see there are no nodes in Drupal um, at, at this time. This is actually loading up language from the course information system and then populating the you know, download syllabus link appropriate to what my section is internally. So that value that I just set for myself. Uh, so if I go back to people for a second here and go to edit, and we're going to go into main profile here. And we're going to change section to another section that I know is uh, Bill Rose only, I believe, is another section. Just want to uh, get on at the moment. Um, and drive for site. See, this actually now points to a different file on the course information system. So it was, it's smart enough to know, hey, this is your section. I'm going to look it up and serve you just the syllabus for you. Um, to verify this in the other system, I've actually been plugging in values that I have in on 10. So this is the course information system. Uh, we go into offerings, and you'll see the access string of Bill Rose only should be serving up this Brian Olandike equipment form. Um, another neat little thing here is, um, so we have resources. So let's say that this uses the electronic reserves. Okay? So this is another showcase of this capability. Um, now instead of syllabus, we're going to go to resources. And so in resources, you'll see we have standard language of resources. Again, there are no nodes in this system. And then we have the additional language that has been told to be required for taking this course of the resource used is electronic reserves. Um, the, where it's getting this information from is there's actually, there are resources in the CIS. So in this case, we have targeted ones like angel language and electronic reserves, and there's a syllabus one as well that's um, kind of hidden here. But so electronic reserves language, when you see this is the language that's showing up in that other site. If I edit it in the CIS right now, and we'll, we'll just remove this portion of it, and then we go back to the course, hit refresh, you'll see it's gone now. So it's currently pulling this dynamically. Uh, obviously, we want to cache and store this information locally. You know, once we've gotten it the first time as to what it is. Um, you can also get, you know, dip, I can change this remotely then. So, you know, I'm able to give certain access permissions in the course information system that do have implications on what happens in the course. Um, but is a lot more secure in terms of the information that we open up to people. So, uh, for example, this site can only one directionally talk to the course information system. The course information system can't push data to our course uh, at the moment. So, I mean, that's just a, a policy that we're playing around with currently. Um, so, I'll refresh that just to get the full thing. Uh, we can also add additional language there by adding different resources. So. We go into syllabus and we say, well, this requires angel now. We go back and reload resources. You'll now see that it's correctly loading in angel and the electronic reserve language. So we're dynamically building the resources page, uh, something that's an instructional design best practice to do, uh, to you know, communicate the resources that a student needs to take a course. Uh, but at the same time, you don't want to keep copying this language and once the language changes, um, especially with you know, regards to technologies. Uh, say you have YouTube language, and YouTube changes something about how you access that address, you don't want to have to go around every course and remember, well, how, how did I use that language? Um, another thing to do, we can you know, switch to another address, or um, let's use access string 12345 again um, and show another nice little pervasive link uh, to solve it. an issue we currently have um, with LMS versioning and section management. Uh, so, Put that in one to three five. Okay, because I know one to three five works. 
and we're going to go back to the syllabus page. And so the syllabus page loads its syllabus language from CIS. It has my sample syllabus. I could download it. Right? And so there's, I'm presented with that syllabus. If we go back here, though, we can also now create a, a link. And this is syllabus slash download. And then I click that. And it will now open the PDF of that sample syllabus. Why this is important is that this is now a static link an instructor can place in their course. And it will automatically figure out what syllabus a student should be served. Uh, right now, the section management that you have to do in an LMS is absurd, quite frankly. Um, you do a lot of replication. You copy a lot of material over and over and over again. Um, and we notice a lot of times during setup by our instructional design team, really what they want is they just want a place to point to that's the canonical source for this information. Um, and a lot of times that, that is a master section, but this allows you to basically create a master section in um, an LMS and then point to a link that's you know outside the LMS in this case, um, but is going to serve the correct information. So this way, if you stamp it out for another instructor, if they want to modify it slightly, they can still have, you know, we still get the syllabi collected in a central location that you know, everybody can review, we can put our own workflow on. Um, and see, we go back out to part 10 here. So I mean, again, this is Drupal, so it's fieldable. I can put all kinds of different information in here. Um, in the future, we can add other services that talk to this service. So uh, what we're currently, what I'm currently investigating is how we could have a different service, like a studio service, talk to the course in the, the course itself, the course outline, um, to do something like this. So you see we have glossary over here. So you can see I have my glossary of terms, which kicks out. These are, you know, finding, it's targeting these words, finding them in the page. But then you can actually do kind of a associate or embed assignment type of a thing, um, or embed interactive activity or case study or what have you, and actually post that, you know, when I click this button, and it's actually going to the other service, adding it there because we have pervasive logins. And then this page, on load time would ask the other service, hey, do you have anything for me? If it finds an assignment, then it loads it up in line, or you know, if it's a case study, it loads it as a, a slide out tab or whatever you want. Um, the reason that you would set things up in this way is uh, so that, again, so that they can scale independent of one another, you know, people can access them at different addresses. Um, there's really a lot of architectural advantages to this long term.